Hey, hey guys, me back here again with another video. Something real cool doing today. I'm actually making a plow for the back of my car to stow some new garden beds. So we've got the bits and pieces here, we'll show you. So keeping it nice and simple, stupid, we've got just basically a long draw bar here, which is gonna have a tow hitch on the end of it. We're gonna weld this uh, long length here, which is gonna then have the um, ripper teeth they're going to be welded to it then and for the ripper teeth we'll show you how they're being made over here because i've got my mate nick helping me today he's got his blacksmithing equipment here his forge and everything ready to go so what we're going to be doing is turning these bits of pipe here into ripper blades so basically what we've got to do we've cut them to length we've got to put these through the kiln well not the kiln the um forge and heat the red up, heat them nice and red hot, and we've got to flatten them out so they can be actually used as proper teeth. So we'll get some footage of that being done. Here's Nick over here. Want to say hi, Nick? There you go, Pigs. Yeah, he's a blacksmith helping me out. So yeah, let's get stuck into this. It's alright mate, I got it on camera. Yep. Try using a stick for the first time in a while. Just don't touch the- OW! <laughs> <laughs> the ground's wet! <laughs> the ground's wet! Fucking hate stick well. Get it get it started up. Get yeah. it nice and hot. So I haven't used one of these in like literally years. No, get it hot like this. Oh, get it. No, I don't do that over my roll thing. That's terrible. It's gonna be the bottom, is it? So after my failed attempt at using a stick welder, this is Nick's job at a stick welder. Much better. Sorry, Kai. <laughs> hey, I'm good with the, I'm good with the MIG welder, it's not with the stick you, welder. Very hot. Oh. Righto, thanks to Nick. That's the draw bar all welded to together. What do you want to call it? <laughs> the plow to the draw bar. Um, so the next step we've got to do is weld on all those teeth to this. Um, guess we're cracking onto that. So, so here we have the teeth being heated up in the forge, so they'll get them nice and red hot, ready to be moulded. <laughs> We're on a roll today. There we go, these are in flattened flattening the pipe down to a tooth. Beautiful. That's what we want. One down, three to go. Another one bites the dust. Right oh, we've the last tooth here to do. By the way guys, if you're ever forging with galvanized metal, which you really shouldn't do, make sure you, you don't breathe in the fumes, and if you do, stand upwind, not downwind, like we're doing, the wind's blowing that direction, but yeah, it's a little bit sketchy to be doing this in all honesty. 
would like a custom knife, find me on Nick Graham Knives on Instagram and Facebook. We'll spruce that in the uh, description so you can find that nice and easy. Righto, so there's the four rip teeth all in position, ready to weld. What we're gonna do is we've got some solid bar, which Nick is just cutting off over there right now. And we're gonna weld the solid bar here so it sticks in. That way you can slot these teeth over it in any position you want because you want them shaped that way to rip through the ground. <clears throat> but when it time comes time to plow, you can turn these around and they'll make channels out then as well. You can have big wider channels for you. That's the idea anyway, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, we'll film and keep posted. Okie doke, so there's all the solid bits of pipe in place, ready for master, well, master stick weld and Nick to <laughs> put them together. Thongs, that's, what you need. that's it, the old Chinese work boots. I'm in the way, just let me know. Wobbly. Thank you. All right, well, that's all the that's all the little nubs tacked in. So we're just going to give them a proper weld now, and then. Stick the teeth on. Cool, cool, let's fucking rip into it. Right, oh, so we're going, to, we've done a couple of test runs already and it's starting this working pretty well. So I'll show you this test run, but you can see here we just made a basic little shackle that will go over the tow ball. We put some drain grates on there as a weight so it helps dig it into the ground. And yeah, like I said, it's not working too bad. We're just tilling this grass up first to see how well it rips it up. And it's working so far, so we'll show you it in action right now. Yep, go for it. Oh. Stop! And there you go. Not perfect, but as you can see, it's ripping the grass up nicely. Give it a few runs and that'll all be gone and then it's just a matter of tilling the soil up so all in all i'm pretty happy with this like i said it's not not without hard work but it works isn't that right nick works tops, that's it <laughs> may it look like much but see what i mean all the grass a lot of grass has been tilled up this is exactly what we want so we're starting to dig through the soil like I said, give it a few runs and she's all good. We'll be down to dirt. Righto, so back here at my place now. 
I haven't brought the plough back over here yet, but as you saw in the video at my mate's next place, it's working pretty good. Um, so I'll probably have a, the next video, mm, I don't know if it'll be the next video, but video coming up would be, be me starting to do it here on my property, getting my gardens um, ploughed up, and I'll just show you where I'm going to be doing that which is going to be basically all this side of the property. Not all straight away, but eventually I want to utilize a lot of this area. I want to grow some crops. Um, so, but we'll be starting probably down the back end of the property just because of these birds I've got laying around the, not laying around the place, <laughs> scratching around the place because um, I haven't got the money to fence all the gardens off and they don't tend to go over that far. So hopefully if I do the garden beds over there, it shouldn't be too much of an issue as two ducks just fly over there, so it could be an issue. We'll see, but hey, that's farming for you. So yeah, pretty exciting. Um, yeah, you'll be seeing some actual ploughing being done, some tilling, laying out seed, laying out seedlings. I'll be teaching you this. Um, well, I'll be teaching you this at the same time as I'm learning, because I'm not exactly a fucking expert. I'm not a farmer growing up at all. This is all new to me. Um, so... Yeah, you'll be learning along with me, and we'll be doing some crops, growing some vegetables on a large scale. And another thing coming up, I'll show you this here, just a minute, is I've scored myself a free native beehive. Because <sighs> um, my mate was cutting up some firewood and accidentally cut through it, unfortunately. But luckily the bees are all still fine, the nest is still fine. So last night I relocated them over here. You can't probably see them in the video, um, but... They're here, they're flying around, and you can just see there, all well, there, there you go, you can see a few of them now. So that's their nest, which unfortunately got cut through, but like I said, they're okay, and they seem to be mending it up. And um, we actually collected some honey from them too, which is really nice, because like I said, there was the, because he cut through the log, um, there was a honey super, which if you know anything about beekeeping, the different parts of the hive, you've got your main hive, and then you have your honey soup, which is basically their food store. So there was a separate, there's a big honey super that was cut off and they weren't even utilizing it. So we thought, oh, well, we'll cut the, mash that up and get some honey out of it, which is actually really nice. Different tasting honey. Don't worry, the bees are still forming. We left some comb for them. Um, but yeah, so you'll be seeing a video cut from the future of me making an actual bee box to put the relocate those into properly. So that's another thing I want to get into doing is, is um, doing some bees around here because... Once you put them in a the box, you can um, then, after a few amount of time, you can re you can actually split those boxes up and split the hives up, and you can make different um, hives, which then can be put around different parts of your property, or you can sell them, give them around. Like, it's a good thing to do. It helps get the bee population up and going, and also helps pollinate all your plants, which is very important because I want to be growing a lot of plants here. So that was a really good score finding those native bees. Um, but yeah. I think I'm talking a bit fast and get a bit rambly here now, but long story short, there's some exciting stuff coming up here in the future, so stay tuned for it, subscribe if you're new, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Bye.